So I just want to welcome everyone to the Living in Grace weekly live series with Dr. Anna Nguyen, which is the best-selling author of Living in Grace, Living Your Best Life Now. I'm Mai Nguyen, your co-host along with Dr. Anlan, and our goal for these live sessions is really to do a deep dive into the philosophy and practical strategies shared in the book of Dr. Anlan that just launched a couple of weeks ago. So thank you so much for joining us. And just to kick things off, I'd like to invite Dr. Anlan to share a few, um, just a short excerpt from the book. Okay, thank you, Mai. And uh, just for yeah. your information, this book is ready from Amazon. So you can actually can purchase this from Amazon. The print book is, is now ready. And uh, to kick off things, I just would like to read an excerpt in one of the strategy called Connecting with Your Heart, uh, Choose to Love. And it started with a quote from Eckhart Tolle, the power of the heart is to be connected with who you are at the deepest level. The most sacred organ in our own body is our heart. Because of some mystical force in the universe, out of 400 trillion chances, the universe loves you enough to give you this heart. It was formed right at the beginning when your force of life was formed in your mother's womb, way before the brain was formed. It is still a mystery as to where it came from. But it is a unique gift for you. It knows who you are even before you were born. It has the faithful and unconditional love that it gives you for your whole life. From the time you started your first breath to come into this world until the time you take your last breath on this earth, it's always there for you with you and loving you without any judgment, regardless of how life is treating you. According to a recent study by the HeartMark Institute, it was confirmed that the heart is 60 times stronger electrically and 5,000 times stronger than magnetically than the brain. It is the best gift that a human being is given at birth. The heart is, has been working for us beating 100,000 times a day to sustain more than 100 trillion cells in our own body. But have we ever had a chance to appreciate its unconditional love and honor its work? Some of the best way to connect with our own heart is through some of the technique that we will share later. So today we talk about uncertainty. And when we talk about uncertainty, we feel very strongly during this turbulent time, and especially for today. And that is when uh, my ask me uh, how, you know, what kind of topic that we will talk uh, about, then I immediately think about coping with uncertainties that lead to worries, stress, and, and, and all the, the, the an easy feeling within our heart. So that's why I picked the topic and I picked this excerpt to talk to, to, to share with you today. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that beautiful excerpt for all of us, uh, especially during these uh, uncertain times as well. Uh, so, and by the way, I just wanted to share with everyone as you are watching live, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to uh, enter your questions in the comment box. So that way we can uh, be able to converse with you and share with you. This is a dialogue. And so we want to create um, more questions, if, especially if you already have read the book. Uh, and if you haven't yet are curious, uh, please do um, you know, ask away. So thank you. So at this time, Dr. Anlan, I, I wanted to ask a little bit more about since you talk so much about, you know, connecting with our heart, uh, perhaps uh, do you have a practical strategy or a practical tool that maybe you can share with us when it comes to uh, connecting with the heart? Yes. So basically, uh, it's a very simple uh, breathing technique. And basically, if you are... Um, 
you meditate often, you would know. Uh, the, the main thing that I want to emphasize here is how do you feel the connection with your own heart? And as I mentioned, the heart is right here. It's, it's right within each of us. And it's a gift from the universe that each of us is given. But most of the time, we worry too much on the outside world. We think a lot about the outcomes of the election, how it would impact us, how the economy would react, the whole night. And the more we think, we tend to let our focus on the other thing rather than within ourselves. So the easiest way to really handle the uneasy feeling because it's all around your thoughts. And I mentioned a lot of, of that in, um, in my book that how your thoughts lead to your emotions and from emotions, it lead to the reaction. And even it release the chemicals when we are experiencing stress and thinking about uncertainties, uh, those stress hormone start releasing in our body. And before you know it, you feel you sweating and even sometimes you feel very uneasy, right? And it affect our own immune system. So given all of that, the best way would be coming back and realize that we have this heart that always there for you. And by doing some breathing technique that's very simple, you can really anchor on your heart and realize that despite things outside, you still have the world inside. The heart is still working for you, unconditionally loving you and support you throughout the day. So the first step would be breathing. And in my book, I mentioned that it's about five minutes breathing technique. So first of all, uh, so maybe we could, can do it together, okay? So when you sitting comfortably at home, then you can, um, you know, uh, stand, uh, you know, stand up a little, not stand up, but sit up a little bit to make sure that your spine is, is you know, straight and your face is relaxed. Your hands, you can put the palm, you know, uh, upper, uh, upward on your knees. And you can really focus on breathing. So when we, we normally breathe, right? We breathe in and then we breathe out. And when you breathe in, you will count from one to 10. So when you breathe in, take a deep breath in. And when you breathe out, you breathe out through the mouth. So let's do it just very simply, just focus on breathing in and you count from one to 10. And then you imagine that you hold it for about four, one, two, three, four, and then you breathe out. Now you can breathe out through your nose or if it's more convenient, you can breathe out to your, through your mouth. But that would be our rhythm of breathing in, hold and breathing out. And when you breathe in, please notice that, just imagine the oxygen coming through your nose and coming down to your throat, coming down to your lung and go to your heart. And from the heart, it takes the oxygen and go to every cell in your body. You can do that imagination. And then when you hold it, you imagine the oxygen go to every single cell in your body. And then on breathing out, you imagine the carbon dioxide coming from the cell back to the heart, back to the lung, back to the nose, and you, or back to the mouth, and then you breathe out. So that's the part of imagination. And then also, when you're breathing in, you can feel the air, the environment is safe, and you're telling yourself, breathing in, I breathe in peace. So you feel the peacefulness coming in. And when you breathe out, I would say breathing out, 
I breathe out love. So if you can practice with me now and you can close your eyes and let's do the breathing. Breathing in. I breathe in peace. You imagine the oxygen coming through your nose, coming down to your lung, coming down to the heart, and it goes to every cell and you feel safe. And then you breathe in out, you imagine that all the love you have, you send it out to the loved ones, to others, and to the air, to the earth. And let's do that for six times, so for one minute. Breathing in, I feel safe. I feel the oxygen is coming to every cell in my body. Breathing out, I send out the love and I can appreciate all the carbon dioxide coming out into the air. Breathing in, I feel peace. I'm here at this moment to appreciate the breath. The breath. And when I breathe out, I'm sending out the love to everyone, to the environment, to the earth that I belong to. And then after that, you start putting your heart, your hand on the heart. And when you breathe in, you can feel the heart is beating. And you remember a memory that is really wonderful for you in the past. So just imagine, just try to remember, remember one special memory. Imagine that you relive in that memory and it brings a smile into your face because you really appreciate that moment. And then you breathe out, you send out love and appreciation to the moment of life that you had in the past. And you do that for another minute. And not just remember the memory, you actually try to imagine relieving that wonderful moment. So you will notice some joys, some joy, some uh, happiness showing up in your heart. And you can say, thank you. Thank you for the moments in my past that brought me joy, brought me happiness. Remember when you're breathing, you count it from one to 10. And when you breathe out, you also count from one to 10. And the last minute, you can continue to put your, your hand on your heart or you can put it down back to your knee. And just have a deep breath, take in the air from the earth, you imagine that you are so grateful that you're safe, you are here and you appreciate the air and you appreciate every single cell in the body responding to the oxygen and continue to give you the energy. And when you set, you free out, sending out love, sending out the intention of connecting with everyone on this planet because regardless of the skin color of, of races of culture we are all in this together another deep breath in 
and then another deep breathe out. And you can open your eyes now. Yes, I, I do have a, a question just to clarify, because I think for someone like yourself who practices uh, daily, uh, it might come as uh, you know, it might come out naturally right now. Uh, is there a routine that you would uh, recommend mm -hmm. for us to do so that it becomes a natural trigger like that? Let's say when I feel my body's heating up or I'm tense, mm -hmm. because worry, yes. anxiety, or anger, then I basically somehow train myself and my body to go right into breathing. Because sometimes I feel like we know what to do, but we forget and we just automatically fall back to what we normally do, which is mm -hmm. yell, do, do things that we normally do to deal yeah. with anxiety and worry and anger. I share that in my book too. So basically you have to build in a routine, right? And everything is like that. We know that it's good for us, but if we don't build it into a routine, just like walking in the morning or running, a, a physical activity is good. But if we don't do it routinely, then it doesn't help, right? Same thing with this. So in the morning, the first thing you do before you get out of bed. So even before you get out of bed, you can do this. Or you can sit up, like after you get up, you you know, you just start seeing the day. And then just take five minutes. You can sit on on you know on the edge of the the, the bed and just do that five minutes uh, breathing and set the intention. Like the, the two minutes would be breathe deeply, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, ten until ten, right? Hold it for four or five seconds and breathe out. And when you get into the in and out pretty good, like you can count for about four or five breaths, then you start thinking, imagining. Now, when you imagine the oxygen coming from your nose, coming down to the, the lung and go to the heart and go to every cell, imagine that your body is, is just a wonderful planet. It has a hundred trillion cells, a hundred trillion cells that responding to that oxygen that you breathe in and you don't know. But when you imagine that it's happening, then you actually connect it to your body more closely through breathing. So you count for sick time and then you, you count for, a, you start hooking your, your hand on your heart and doing another breathing like that when you remember good memories and find a good thing to remember every day. And by doing that, you train yourself to remember good things in the past, you know, and, and store, it's store right here. It's store right in your heart. I'm sure if you try after a while, you can find some good moment that you have forgotten for a long time and it just show up. If you read the book or are curious about the book, you can also send an email, right, Dr. Enlai? Do yep. you have an email you prefer for everyone to maybe send in reviews, comments or anything like that? Uh, you can send to uh, either nlonmp at gmail.com or you can just like we have on Enlon the Coach, I have the email there, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Facebook group. Uh, and also the Facebook group, I am always on this Facebook group. So somebody posts something, I will be notified immediately. And the name of the Facebook group is Living Your Best Life. Who would not want to live your best life, right? So living your best life is a right, a birthright. Each of us deserve to live your best life, but we have to set that intention and starting with grace. And I, my dream and actually all of my ambition is to use this model and serving everyone so that every single human being on this earth, you can live your best life now. So uh, the print book is here. So if you want to, uh, to check it out, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful uh, short book and it would be a wonderful thing to read during the Thanksgiving holiday if you have not uh, read the book. And I strongly recommend it. And we will, if you join the Facebook group, we will do a book reading together and maybe a seven day challenge later on to really help you to walk through some of the strategies in the book so that I can serve you and, and help you to live your best life. 
But thank you, Mai, and thank you, everyone, for joining us.